Hello, hello everyone, Inquisitor Vaughn here, and welcome back to another episode of my podcast, Inquisitor Vaughn's Voxcast. And in this episode, I want to talk about the idea of hobby tourists. So I think it's safe to say that we have all calmed down after the custodies lore update in which there are now women custodies. I feel like we've all kind of calmed down about it. Some of us have went through the stages of grief. Some of us are just disattached from the update and some of us just don't want to talk about it anymore, right? So now that we've all generally moved on, I think it's the perfect time to talk about something that I wanted to talk about during the situation and while it was happening, but you know, it was a really hard time to have a rational conversation at that time because everyone was so angry, so upset. There are a lot of emotions being thrown around. And so uh, it was not the right time to talk about this. But uh, I want to talk about it now because everyone's pretty much calmed down and moved on from it, right? So during the custodies lore update in which we found out that there were women custodies, I made two videos on the subject. The first video was before the confirmation from Games Workshop. And the second video was after the confirmation, right? In the second video, I told you all that I was not going to make any more videos about the topic. And I did so because, well, first, the second video was not going to be the video that I posted. The second video was actually going to be a very angry, very passionate rant um, that I, you know, I sent to Lord Strife. And I was like, bro, I don't know if I should post this. And he listened to it. He got back to me and he's like, bro, don't post this. And so I didn't. Um, so the second video was going to be way different than what it turned out to be because I also was sucked into that rage, you know, the, the emotional outbursts that was happening in the community at the time. Right. But I also decided not to make any more videos about it because I noticed a lot of YouTube creators or content creators were rage baiting people into uh, watching their videos and like they pretty much said the same thing throughout all of the videos that they would make on the topic but they would just make multiple videos of it and I understand why right as a youtuber whose channel is monetized you want to earn as much as possible right and perhaps my perspective is a little bit different because I don't depend on my YouTube channel as a main source of income like a primary source of income I work outside of YouTube like I have a regular job so maybe my perspective is different because of that but for people who who their their work is YouTube they 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 make a living off of YouTube I understand the need to make videos that capture people's attention that you know have uh, kind of like baity comments you know or baity titles that kind of are clickbait you know that get attention and all that stuff I understand that 100% and um, I don't blame anyone for doing it I like I said I understand I'm not trying to get in the way of anyone's hustle but what I did notice was that during this time there were a lot of people making videos about this topic now for some it was already established pillars of this community of this poor gaming community like luton and major kill sharing their opinions and then they made one video and that was it right and you know i aspire to be like those guys because they know you know like they're at a place in their content creation where they don't have to create multiple videos about the same topic they can just make one big video and get that out the way right and then there were a bunch of smaller youtube channels who rightfully so were taking advantage of the situation and making content right because if you if there's something like a lore change or a, a big update in the in the hobby and you're a smaller channel sharing your opinion about this or sharing your opinion about the change or lore update or hobby update will get more views on your channel so it's like i didn't i, I wasn't really feeling any kind of way about you know the newer content creators making videos about this change that's actually to be expected and that's something that you want to do as an up-and-coming um youtuber who is going to be making content around the hobby that we enjoy right but then there was a third group and the third group were content creators on youtube who didn't necessarily know much about warhammer they didn't play the game they know very little from like you know uh, videos that they've seen on YouTube, but they don't really know about the Lord of the universe. They don't really know about the things that they are going to talk about, but they were the ones making like 
10, 12, 15 videos about the same thing, saying the same thing over and over again. And it was these, it was this group of people that I had a problem with, right? Because they would tell us in the beginning of their video, they would tell us like, Hey guys, I don't really know much about Warhammer 40 K or Hey guys. Um, I, I don't know much about this faction or whatever, but apparently something's happening in the Warhammer community. And like, they would admit to us that they don't really know. They're not participants in this community. They don't know about the lore. They don't know about the universe that, you know, of the setting, but they have this opinion about this very pivotal point in a lore change, you know, like, the custodies, the lore change, it's, it's really important. And it's, it was really big. And yet they know nothing about it, but have the opinions that they do. And they were making five, seven, 10, 12, 15 videos saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I was just like watching this happen. And I kind of like made a list of these content creators and I looked through their other work and I saw like a pattern, right? And the pattern was that a lot of the people who were commenting on what was happening with the custodies lore update and the fact that there are women custodies, all of their channels were politically leaning, right? They had a, they had a very unique perspective of, you know, games and, uh, narrative universes. And they were looking at it from a political, a real world political lens. And you see the words woke and like, you know, leftist and, and inclusive and all these other terms being used very casually very frequently and it's kind of like okay cool so this is your brand you you look at things from a political standpoint copy but then it's also like if you, if you know nothing about warhammer if you know nothing about the universe if you know nothing about the lore and why it means so much to people then why the fuck are we listening to you like i really had a point where i was just like looking at the comments that people were leaving under this this channel or these channels and i was like you guys realize that this person doesn't even know what they're talking about. They're just feeding on the rage. And for some reason, when we're angry, we want to be around angry people. We want other people to feel what we're feeling, right? And that's pretty much the definition of rage baiting. When people make content that feeds that rage, right? We want to see that rage. We want to want to feel like someone else uh, like feels the same way that we do. And it's impossible for these people to feel the same way that we do about it as we being people who actually play the game, people who actually invest in the lore, people who actually know what we could, we're talking about, you know, like it's impossible for them to feel the way that we do because they don't invest in the hobby. It's like, so if you don't invest in the hobby, if you don't really know what you're talking about, then why are we listening to you? You know? And some of you are like, okay, well, Inquisitor Vaughn, what, what channels are you talking about? Well, I know off the top of my head, one of them is Yellow Flash. That guy was walling, you know, and I, I respect all these content creators for the hustle. I'm not blaming them and all that stuff, but I am saying that why are we, why were we listening to these people when they don't have any idea about, you know, they don't know the lore. They don't know the, 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 uh, narrative of the universe that we're talking about. There's another one that was Asmigan. He, he was very focused on like, you know, just the political aspects of it. It's like, maybe it's me, maybe I'm, it's a personal thing. I'm pretty sure it's a personal thing. And if it is, I'll take accountability for it. In fact, I'll take initiative and say, it's a personal thing. And I take accountability for it. But I find people who talk about like, hobbies and games and like and like narrative universes and they can only talk about it from a real world political perspective i find that to be so boring it's like oh my gosh like every the every day i wake up i have to deal with real world issues i have to deal with real world politics and the way the world works and everything like that right when i go to warhammer 40k when i play a game or when i read a book or when i you know read the rules or something of that nature I do this part, part of the joy of playing Warhammer 40 K is the ability to escape the real world just for a little bit, a little bit of escapism, right? It's like, I, I don't want to have to talk about real world issues in this imaginary setting. Games Workshop did an amazing job crafting this setting to be something that doesn't really follow the same rules as the real world. And that's the allure that a lot of people like about Warhammer. It's like this completely different world. And of course, um, there are references to real world, um, but it's not operating on the same definitions. It's not operating on the same perspective of reality. It's its own fantasy made up world. And I like that about Warhammer. I like that about 40k when I when I play 40k it's like I'm I'm participating I'm like role playing with my army in a different setting in a different world and then when I'm done 
I'm able to return to the real world and deal with all of the crap that comes with existing in this world with a little bit more clarity, with a little bit more release and less tension, you know? Um, and so when people bring real world politics into the, the hobby, I just think it's so boring. Like I, I like mentally disassociate. I'm like, oh my God, can you just, what is, what's with you that you can't, can't, immerse yourself in this fake universe and just enjoy it as it is why do you need to add these real world issues right and um i saw that happening a lot like i saw the, a lot of these content creators who don't know about the universe just talking about the situation and adding all these real world political views and like focusing on the fact that oh games workshop is owned by this and this and the investors are this and this and it's kind of like okay kind of boring conversation um uh you're right to share your opinion you know whatever but kind of boring angle here can we talk about how like you know what your favorite chapter is and like can we talk about something that, that's hobby related what i noticed was that a lot of the videos that they were making about this subject and other warhammer topics too like the amazon deal and things like that it was all political it was all like right leaning and they were saying all this weird shit about like inclusivity and like you know wokeism and all this bullshit and i'm not i'm not left or right i look at both sides and i see flaws in both i see merit in both but it's kind of like to see such a such a perspective being expressed over warhammer 40k is kind of like boring but it's also inaccurate too like you're you're clearly projecting your own political beliefs onto warhammer 40k like if you were to observe it in context you'd see that a lot of what we have in the real world just doesn't apply like a lot of the ideas identities things of that nature just don't apply they probably exist but not in the way that we think uh they exist in the modern world but anyway i saw a lot of creators making these videos and from people who you know don't know about the narrative universe and in the comments right and some of the some some of the content creators themselves would say something like this but in the comments i saw that people started calling each other hobby tourists and i thought that was interesting right and the the main angle that people were calling each other this name or this phrase was that if you accepted the change in the lore, if you accepted the fact that there are now women custodies, then you were a hobby tourist. And the, the idea behind it was that you can't be a hardcore lover of Warhammer 40k and accept this lore change. And I was just like, what? Like, <laughs> it was so dumb. But I, I was like, okay, let me, let me try to rationalize this idea, right? Okay, so what is a hobby tourist? And it's like, I'm trying to define it in the context that I'm seeing it in the in the comments of these videos. And it's basically like, so basically, if you are someone who embraces uh, a progressive change to the narrative universe of Warhammer 40k or any hobby, then you are a hobby tourist. You're not really someone who is a, what's the opposite of a hobby tourist? Because um, like the, the idea of tourist is that you're not originally from a place, but you visit it and then you enjoy certain aspects of it, but then you leave eventually because you're a tourist, right? So what's the opposite, like a hobby nationalist or a hobby, I don't know, like you're a hobby veteran. I don't know what, what's, <laughs> I don't know what the opposite of it is, but to call someone a hobby tourist because they embrace changes in the lore is kind of crazy. And it's like, it, it was the people who didn't really know much about their lore Oftentimes it was people who didn't know much about their lore calling other people hobby tourists. And it's kind of like, I mean, if anyone is a hobby tourist, if we're gonna use that that phrase, wouldn't it be the people who are talking about the setting and don't know what it is? Wouldn't those be uh, considered hobby tourists? If we're listening to listening to like a content creator on YouTube, right? And they're talking about Warhammer 40K and they, they don't make Warhammer content, but they're, they're commenting on this, the situation that's happening, right? If they comment on Warhammer when it's convenient for them, when it can get them profits, right? Wouldn't that make them a hobby tourist? Not the people who are sharing their opinions, who actually play the game, who actually invest in the books, who actually, you know, participate in the community and all of its aspects. Not all of its aspects, but, you know, in one of its many aspects. Wouldn't those people who, who are calling other people hobby tourists be considered the tourists? 
it's such a weird idea to think that someone is a hobby tourist, right? Um, and it it kind of it kind of relates, I think, to gatekeeping. Except for I don't think that gatekeeping is bad. It more relates to the idea of like elitism, where it's kind of like, well, I have been in this community for ten plus years, and when I entered this community, especially when I was learning uh, Warhammer Thirty K, right, there was a sense of elitism, like, oh. I've been in the community for this long, and therefore my opinion should be valued over anything. And it's kind of like I learned after a while that some people just want to be treated like they are somewhat better than you, or higher than you, or have more knowledge. And this get this is in like all communities, all hobby communities, all groups, or anything. People who have been there longer feel like they have the authority to define what the world is to you. Like what the universe is to you, and it's kind of like it's not true at all, and、um, it's kind of weird to want that kind of gratification from、uh, newer hobbyists. If you are at, like an elder hobbyist, you should want to welcome newer people into the community、uh, without the need for them to fan your ego. But、um, I was just like thinking, like to to call someone a hobby tourist is kind of weird. It it does give that feeling of elitism, as in like, oh, you're just here because it's popular right now. I was here when it was, you know, we were just a, a group of guys in in the basement playing Warhammer 40k by ourselves, and everyone thought we were nerds. It's like things change over time, right? Like things change. And now the change for Games Workshop is that it's way more popular than it has ever been. There are more people getting into Warhammer 40k. There, it's like more mainstream now. Like if someone said, "Hey, I play Space Marines," someone who doesn't really play the game might know what you're talking about. You know, like so Warhammer is way more popular. And the fact that yes, we had to endure being treated as nerds and all this stuff, and we still are being treated as nerds. The fact that we had to endure that in the past doesn't give us some right to say that we are better than thou or to call other people. Hobby tourists. It's just weird. Like it's creating this sense of elitism in the community that's completely unnecessary. And going back to the content creators that were making video after video after video, trying to you know get as many views about the topic and saying the same thing over and over again. Like I said earlier, I don't blame them. I know the YouTube game. My channel is monetized, right? So I I earn you know off of the videos that I make. But the thing is, like at a certain point. The people know what you're doing. At a certain point, when the rage dies down, people see that you're just commenting over and over and over again, and it's kind of like, okay, we got it. The first five episodes of this of your channel, the first five videos that you made on this topic, we got it. So why do you keep, you know, creating these videos? And like I said, I understand. The more views you get, the more money you earn, 100. But there, that comes at the cost of like integrity, right? There's a reason why I look up to people like Luton and Major Kill and like other content creators because they know they have the maturity to understand like, hey, this is I'm I'm only gonna make one video about this topic. That's all that's needed, and I'm gonna move on to something else. Yes, I feel this way, whether positively or negatively about this change. I'm gonna make a video about it because their their opinion is important, and I'll get onto that in a in a minute. But like, I'm gonna make this video and then I'm gonna leave it alone. There's a reason why I look up to people like that rather than people who are、uh, are making five, seven, ten videos about the same thing over and over again. Because at this point, you're just basically like ske- like stealing my attention, you know, like wasting my time, basically. Right now, when it comes to the people who are pillars in this community, there are so many lore YouTubers on on YouTube that have created channels. Uh, that have served as guides to us, you know. Like th- when we want to know some lore information, we look up them. I look at other content creators when I'm making lore videos, right? Like I, we, we help each other out, I guess, you know. So I look up to these content creators, and it was such a strange thing to see, at least in the comments. By the way, the comments were going, um, and the the like subscriber numbers, right? It was such a strange thing to see that when these pillars of the community, these lore tubers, right, stated their opinions about the、uh, the lore change, it's it was interesting that a lot of them were very neutral about it, neutral to accepting, right?、Um, 
and it was surprising like people like major kill i i didn't expect major kill to be so chill about it um and you know how many subscribers he lost because he was chill about this it's like he major kill is valid the content that he creates is valid sometimes i get a little tired of the humor and the edginess of it but like he's legitimately someone that i look up to as far as content creation you know and to see how how quickly people turned against him when he was saying something positive about a change in lore was crazy you know like but yet when people who don't even play the game who don't even know what warhammer is who barely know what it is when they were commenting on the lore people were flocking to their channels they're subscribing to their you know channels and like commenting all these things trying to convince this person that they are right and it's just like wow someone who we actually know who actually cares about who actually participate in this community their opinion is being taken with less consideration than someone who's from left field a quote-unquote hobby tourist as you would right like i said earlier you know when we are angry we want to be surrounded by anger we want other people to feel what we're feeling we want that feeling to be reflected at us and when people create rage bait content i think we should as a collective just realize that's what's happening and i know it's hard to do in the moments because i remember i was about to do a rage video as well but i know it's hard to do in the moment but we really gotta really gotta know when this is happening because i feel like when when emotions are high when people are like angry or sad or whatever when there's an emotional turmoil people are easy to manipulate right and during this time people were sharing opinions about the warhammer 40k universe that had nothing to do with warhammer 40k and because people were emotional during this time it's easy to incorporate these ideas into warhammer 40k as if they're a part of it when it, they're not they're just being presented as if they are and what i mean by that is like a lot of these woke kind of like people saying that certain elements are woke and inclusive as if there's something wrong with that like i just it's easy for you to adopt outside thoughts that are not really your own when you are in an emotional state and there's these content creators who you know talk about the aspects of the lore and the hobby and they don't even know what they're talking about it's like why do we listen to these guys there was a point i wanted to make about like people feeling like they're elders in the community um and I, I think i went on a tangent so much that i forgot it but basically what i was trying to go with that was that you know yeah there are people who have been in the community for a while and they've been here since rogue trader days or whatever and that's cool and all but it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean shit if someone walks up to you and is like hey i've been here since third edition and therefore i know when it's like cool knowledge bro but what does that have to do with me you know interacting with you like what do you want me to do kneel before you people who are like that like you you want to respect the the knowledge that people have of the lore of course i think when people know the lore and they've been in the community and they've been in a hobby for a while you should like on a very basic level respect their uh their knowledge you know their ability to retain that much information um i have a few friends like that who are just like lore masters like they have old editions of the of warhammer 40k like all the books they have old miniatures they're like walking tomes of history you know and it's really cool to meet people like that especially when you're passionate about a hobby but the people that i know they don't have a superiority complex right like if someone walks up to you in the hobby and they're like i've been here since yada 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 and therefore things should be this way like how they were before don't listen to them it's, it's it doesn't mean anything this is not like this is a hobby that's based on a fake universe you know like what is that what is what is you knowing and what is you uh existing in this hobby for longer than i have mean what effect does it have on my life and you know what should have what effect should it have on my life none you know so completely ignore those people um even me i'm not i've been in this hobby for i don't know a, f a, a few editions since eighth edition and we're on like 10th edition now right um and each edition is like what three years so i've been i've been here for a while i'm not a lore expert I, I have to do research like everybody else you know i'm not some i'm not someone that's on a pedestal yes i have a youtube channel but anyone can make a youtube channel you know like it's not it doesn't mean anything that i that i or anyone knows a little bit more lore or knows about the past of the the hobby or the setting um than you do it doesn't mean anything 
and don't let people treat you like it means something you know like unless they're like chill and they want to share this information with you and they just want you to know it don't don't let the whole status thing or the fact that they've been in the hobby community longer um mean anything to you or mean that they you have to treat them in a certain way because you don't treat them like regular people no matter how old they are no matter how long they've been a part of this community don't fall for the whole hierarchy thing it doesn't it doesn't exist concerning the the videos that i made the comments some of the comments that i received on the the videos that i made were actually pretty dumb i tried my best to like respond to the the more insightful ones or the the ones that i felt like i could actually have a conversation with but some of them were kind of like dumb and i don't really like responding to things that like it just it didn't make sense to me to the point where i was like i'm not even going to entertain this but a lot of people uh they just they you can tell when someone over identifies with something right because in reality we have no control of the lore right games workshop makes it so when people get super super upset to the point where they're like oh my gosh i'm gonna throw away my armies my my faction is ruined you can tell that these people over identify with the faction or with the game or with the hobby and speaking of that some of y'all are liars maybe not those listening to the the video right now but maybe some of you are like but a lot of you guys are liars because i hear i heard online and i read online that people were saying oh my gosh Oh my gosh, I'm going to sell my custodies armies. I can't do this anymore. I'm, they're, they're worthless now. I'm just going to sell them. And like Lord Strife and I were like on the buy sell pages and we were just like buy sell trade pages. We we're just hunting and just looking for people trying to sell their custodies armies. And you know how few people actually try to sell their armies? Like it was ridiculous. Like it, I, I personally only saw one person trying to sell the custodies army, but yet in the comments of these videos, you see like 10, 20, 30 up people saying that they're going to sell their armies. Y'all are liars. You know what y'all tried to do? It sounded like you tried to like influence other people to try to make a decision that you wouldn't yourself make because you probably don't play the game. So you're trying to like hype up the situation and hype up the anger and hype up the rage. So like, so that you can, I guess like make people more angry and get more views and shit but i don't i don't know I'll, what i do know is that you guys are liars some of you are liars you're saying you're going to sell armies you probably don't even have armies that you're going to sell you just wanted to hype up the situation and like i said my friends and i were on the buy sell trade pages like crazy we were hunting hunting for these opportunities to sell armies at extremely low cost because you know trying to sell them right no one was selling practically no one was selling the army so like why would you say that this is what i'm saying when when we hear things when situations like this happen and people start talking shit online you gotta take it with a grain of salt like people some people just like to hype up situations and that's that was proven in the fact that like not everyone was selling their custodies armies a lot of the people who said they had custodies armies to sell didn't actually have it they were just hyping up the situation and that goes back to what i was saying earlier when people are uh experiencing a lot of emotions they're easy to manipulate you know like that one person that i saw probably was you know like influenced to try to sell their army and uh, as far as i know it's still on the page like no one bought the army but like what were they really that upset that they wanted to sell their army or were they just swept up in the emotions of the moment i don't know but that that reaction is weird Right when when Primaris came and the firstborn, you know, were basically uh, pushed to the side, I didn't I didn't have that reaction where it's kind of like, oh my gosh, Space Marines suck now. I'm gonna sell my army. That's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. But yeah, I just wanted to make a video about how I feel like hobby tourists don't exist. Right. Sometimes you explore a hobby and find out that it's not for you. That doesn't make you a, a, a tourist. You know. Uh, if you embrace a certain change or reject a certain change, it doesn't make you a hobby tourist. And this whole idea of someone being a tourist in a hobby is fucking dumb, honestly. And if anyone is a quote unquote tourist, it's the people who don't even play Warhammer, who don't even know what Warhammer is, and they have an opinion about some lore change and they can only speak from it from a real world political angle. It's like if anyone's going to be a tourist, it would be literally those people because they don't even know what the game is, but they have all these opinions about it, right? Now, of course, you can have an opinion about something that you don't know anything about, but if you 
honestly admit that you don't know much about it, then people who are listening shouldn't take it as seriously as someone who does know about the subject, right? And that was my whole point of saying, like, why the fuck are we listening to you if you don't even know what you're talking about? You don't know truly the significance of what this means. You're only speaking about it from a real world political angle and sharing your own personal political ideologies in this hobby. You know, that's really much the point of this podcast episode. I just wanted to talk about it because I said I was going to and um, I never did. I kind of like forgot it. And I guess that's for the best because I don't really try to stir up drama. And I think right now everything has died down. And I don't think, I think it's died down to the point where me making this is not going to stir up a lot. It's just me sharing my opinion about something that happened a while ago. So, you know, I I just wanted to share my thoughts about this whole hobby tourist thing, this whole weird people from left field coming in and sharing their opinion about something they don't know anything about. And us looking at actual lore tubers and just not taking their opinion um with you know more gravity than um we gave these outside people who don't even know what warhammer is but um yeah uh that's pretty much it i just wanted to make a video about that um i am for those who have been following the primark videos i'm still working on them i only have a few left i have corvus corax which i'm working on currently at the time of recording this podcast episode and i have alfarius and then i also want to do one last video going over the lost legions and information about the lost legion and i also want to share my homebrew idea for the second legion because you know there's there's this belief in the community that basically games workshop made the two lost legions as a way of encouraging hobbyists to make their own ideas about the two lost legions and while i don't think that's necessarily true i was inspired a while ago to create um a second legion idea and so i want to share that idea in the last video for the primark series i mean if you follow me on instagram inquisitor vol 40k by the way shameless plug um you probably already know some of the um what what that idea is going to be but i'm very excited to finish the primark series to be honest, I had to take a break from it because these videos take a lot out of me. They're very, when I say deep dive, I really do mean deep dive. And if you've watched any of my Primark videos, you I, you can see that it's a deep dive. It's not just, I don't repeat what everyone else says. I actually do my own like little research and try to make correspondences and theories and all that stuff. Oftentimes the videos are almost an hour long, if not more than that. And so these videos take a lot out of me. And so I had to take a break from making them. I made the uh cursed founding series and i really had a great time doing that that was something i've wanted to do for a while for those who have been following my channel for um for some time now i've made videos about the cursed founding before and i kind of had to get rid of those in order to make a better video and uh, like a series of videos about the chapters created during that founding i really enjoyed that it was a much needed refresher and now that I'm done with that project, I can return to the Primark project um, series and continue with the three videos that I have left to make. All right. So for those who have been waiting for that, I appreciate your patience so much. I also have a lot of things planned for uh, the channel, including new merch. Yeah, I'm at this point now where I'm making new merch for the channel. So I'm very excited to drop that. And uh, once I get a few more ideas out, um, I'm going to drop the merch. And now you're going to be able to buy Inquisitor Vaughn merch. But I'll let you guys know more about that in my community tab here on the channel. Thank you all for listening. Um, please share your comments down below on anything that I talked about in this video. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Without anything else to be said, Inquisitor Vaughn out. Remember, the Emperor protects and the future is successor.